as you get older, you're not as self-conscious. When you're young, you worry so much about what people think about you. I am no longer silenced. I identify in what you call the Stonewall generation. I have lived the entire arc of the LGBT civil rights movement, basically starting at Stonewall up until today. Statistically, there are 1.5 million LGBT older adults in the United States. As baby boomers age, and as we have this huge age wave coming, there's going to just be more and more LGBT older adults. I would say most of the LGBT community is very youth focused. We talk a lot about LGBT youth bullying. We talk a lot about LGBT youth homelessness, rightfully so, but you hear a lot less about LGBT aging and LGBT older adults. In America, we feel that as people grow older, they grow lesser. They grow lesser in terms of physical ability. They grow lesser in terms of intellect. They grow lesser in terms of importance. I don't believe that we grow lesser because we grow older. The Lunch Bunch is our senior community uh, lunch program so that we have a place as elders to come together five days a week to enjoy one another's company. So what's happening today, folks? I was in adolescence in the 60s. If you happen to hear the word homosexual, it was a pretty unusual thing to hear. Well, it happened that sophomore year, uh, I was an orientation leader at school, and so when I moved in, I went and I checked to see who my new RA would be, and I knocked on the door, and this guy opened the door. All I can say is I had what I call a Walt Disney moment. I fell in love with this guy at first sight. I spent the next several hours in my room alone and I cried and I prayed. What I realized, not only had I fallen in love with this guy, but that I was gay. I was born in 1955. When I was 12 years old, um, I sat with my mom and I told her that I thought um, that I was queer or, or, or whatever word I used because I was noticing the boys at school. She said, if this is the way, you know, you're going to live your life, I, I think you'd be subject to ridicule. I could not bear people laughing at you. And so I think you should live your life very quietly. I found uh, humor was my way of keeping the bullies at bay. And I figured that out really fast. There are a few big concerns facing LGBTQ older adults. The first is social isolation. Another big need for this population is safe and affordable housing. And I live here in Town Hall. One thing that I can say honestly from the bottom of my heart is that the experience of being here in this community, the freedom to be my genuine self, to be involved comes from being here. Welcome everyone, this is a conversation with One Roof Chicago. The idea is that those of us from the aging uh, side of the community can provide the socialization and support that the youngsters don't have. How can we create a community that focuses on home, that creates a space where you can have natural connection, natural mentorship, along with more established support services? all under one roof. One Roof Chicago is a project that we're engaged in to build an intergenerational LGBT friendly residence on the south side of Chicago. I started undergraduate school in 1967 and I had the privilege that that very few African Americans had. I had been admitted to study architecture and in that class of 400 people, there was me, two women, and the rest were white guys. Our instructors and advisors over the course of the first year came to each of us and told us that we needed to find another course of study because there was no place for us in architecture in either the curriculum nor the profession. One of the reasons why 
I am so emotionally connected to the One Roof Chicago project is because that'll probably be the only building that I ever build. You know, I won't be the architect of record, but I'm going to put as much of my soul into that building, into that directive as I can. LGBTQ older adults are much more likely to be aging alone compared to their heterosexual and cisgender peers. So they are twice as likely to live alone. They're four times less likely to have children. We look around and we're like, boy, oh boy, my buddies are missing. My pals are missing. People with whom I demonstrated, people with whom I interacted at the bars, they're gone. Mid 80s, I got to Hollywood the AIDS epidemic had hit with full force. We couldn't get any help, you know, from the government. But what was interesting was the way in which we figured out we're going to have to take care of our own. And so the acting was almost second. In the 70s and the 80s and the 90s, as LGBT communities grew in presence, we were coming out into public spaces and into identifiable spaces and to our own geographic spaces. This place was one of those places. Of course, it's linked to the height of the HIV AIDS crisis. While this is a memorial, it is also a place of life. The most important thing that grief does is it informs you about life and it encourages you to value your life and your life experiences. I work with a lot of seniors who say that I never thought I would live to see the day where we had marriage equality or we had, you know, these rights or we had gay straight alliances in school. So we've come a really long way, but we still have a long way to go. Young LGBT people have a natural curiosity. They want to know where we came from. They want to know why we're here. They want to know how we got here. They want to know what experiences were like in our time. That says to us that are older is that we have value and we have something to pass along. I think that as you get older, you're more aware of, you know what, honey, <laughs> if you don't like me, that's your problem. You begin to love yourself a little more and know that what you think of me is none of my business. We've got to change that culture and cultures can be changed. I am living proof because I have lived at a time when the culture did not make space for me as a black man or as a gay man. And that has expanded in both of those cases. And it has to continue to expand. And when it expands, I get to live my best life.